folkies! My name is Emily Valken and I play Scandinavian folk music on fiddle and nickel harpa. Today's video is going to be about what I call the three steps of nickel harpa learning. So the, in the process I've noticed that many people go through three main steps in the process of learning and that sometimes they get stuck. So this video is meant as an encouragement to go further and not stay stuck with something. So this video is going to be mostly about nickel harpa. If you play fiddle especially and maybe other instruments as well, you may find things that you can adapt to your own instrument. It's going to be focused mostly on nickel harpa. Also on this video, my usual disclaimer that I know only what I know is especially true because I'm going to talk about my own feelings, my experience, my point of view. So you may not agree, you may not resonate with what I say, totally fine. I'm just telling you what I feel, what I've seen and what my opinion is and how I think everyone could benefit from trying to go further in Nikol Harpa. So, the three steps I have noticed to be part of almost everyone's Nikol Harpa learning. First step is what I call basic playing. So you got a Nikol Harpa, you got a bow, you found kind of a way to hold it, which is already a hassle, and you start playing things, knowing the notes where they are in first position and putting the bow on top of that and you are able to play melodies down there. This is nice, this is the first step and it's, it's very enjoyable. But problem is that I see many many people just being stuck to this step and never going further. I've seen people just playing the same things over and over and not evolving for decades, literally. This makes me very sad, because there is so much more to Nikol Harba playing. And I think if staying on this step is a choice, a full choice, it's totally fine, I respect that. But it should be really a choice, like it should not be that you have just given up, because you didn't manage to go further and you're getting frustrated in your playing. This is super sad, because Nikol Harba has a lot to offer. And what it has to offer, for example, is in the second step, which is how to climb in the keyboard. Basically, Nikol Harpa is not made only for being in first position, but it has a keyboard going very high. And playing on this keyboard just widens the range of your instrument just like crazy. To be honest, I have been a very bad student about climbing in the keyboard. I have not done that, or very little, for many years. I think it's because I have one of these beauties called a four rows keyboard, which I think is super good. I think it's great to be able to play on the four strings. Problem is that it allowed me to transpose down instead of climbing when I should have uh, climbed. So I'm super good at transposing, but I had a bit problems to learn to climb. And now I'm working on that and it's still a bit difficult getting better. Um, Basically, I think climbing is different for all people. Some people will be very afraid of it, some people will be just excited about climbing. I'm just gonna give you some tips about what you could maybe do to help you learn to climb, especially if you're afraid like I was. First, my first tip would be to take a very, very simple, easy tune that you really like and you really play well in first position. And you transpose it a bit higher. Like if it starts usually in A, maybe you transpose it to D. So it's an easy tune, so you're not stressed out, you know it well, and you can learn slowly to play it up there. Then you can transpose it to different heights, different keys, and you try it up there, slowly, calmly. Then another tip I can give you is to try to find tunes that have only some notes that are going high and not too high. So you are mostly in first position, and sometimes you're climbing a little bit. I actually tried to find a tune that was fitting this requirement, and it was pretty tricky, but I found the A part of the Schottis von Havre, which is just going to second position, and the hand is not moving much, so you're just climbing to second position and back. Just playing the first part, so A part for you. B part is more tricky and climbing, actually. Just A part. <laughs> It's just 
moving one position up and then you can go back safely to first position. Sadly the B part is climbing very high, quite high. But yeah, I would encourage you to try to find tunes like that. You can check them on sh sheet music or just by listening or seeing someone play and you can notice, oh, this player is climbing just a little bit when he plays that, that tune. So I will ask to learn that tune from the person. So this is a good tip. It helped me a lot actually because it makes it less dramatic to climb in a way. It's just some notes and if needed, if they are not so clean and not so perfect, you can just go back to first position after and feel safe again. Then my next tip to you is to just play scales. I mean, it's boring maybe, but it's really the basic of many instruments, including nickel harpa. And you can play just easy scales, da -di -da -di -da -di -da -di -da. but I think more interesting for nickel harpa, you have this kind of scale. <laughs> different speeds, rhythms, and so on. So play along with scales, don't just play all, all the same scale, change them, have fun, add drills, add more complicated patterns, play along with them and you will get more comfortable about climbing. Also, my next tip is not super nice, it's just to force yourself. That was what I needed to do. At one point, just small exercises were not enough. I had to just tell myself, play those tunes in the right key, the right octave, just do it now. But actually I can temper that, that tip by saying force yourself in the right moment, in the right environment. What I mean is if you're on a jam for example and people are playing a tune that is climbing and you're not very familiar with climbing, it's not the moment to just think that magically it will work for you. It won't. So it's not the right moment to force yourself to climb. But when you're cozy in a place that you're relaxed, you have time to practice your instrument, you feel good, then that's the moment to really force yourself, okay, now I'm learning that tune that is climbing. I'm now really getting into it. So choose the right moment to force yourself. Because what's important, I think, is to not associate climbing with stress, with problems. You will probably a little bit because it's a bit difficult, but as little as possible. Keep it positive in a way. And my last tip about climbing is to not use your eyes all the time. Eyes are good to see, for example, the first times you play something up there, so you like see where it is. But then when you're practicing, try to play without looking. So you can close your eyes and you can also find a point that is not distracting and just fix that point and play your tune like that. Why that? Because your muscle memory is extremely strong. Good example of that is learning to bicycle. You learn to ride a bike, then you don't bike for 20 years and then you take a bike again and you're still able to ride it. It's a bit the same with the hand. The muscles are pretty slow to learn something, they're a bit lazy, so you have to teach them again and again. But once it's in their memory, in a way, it stays. It stays very, very good. It stays better than in your eyes that are just having information to internalize all the time and sorting out a lot your muscles if you really repeat the pattern for a while it will just understand mm, that's important i need to learn that so your muscle memory is something you should play with because then you will be very solid in your climbing and for doing that you should just trust your fingers like learn your fingers to find their place without the help of the eyes so that's for climbing in the keyboard second step and the third step I want to talk about in this video is great bowing technique. Actually, this second and this third step, they can be happening in the other way, like for different people. Actually, for me, I learned bowing technique 
much earlier than climbing because I was not comfortable with climbing and I think it's probably the case for lots of people coming from fiddle playing and in the opposite people who come from guitar playing usually climbing is totally fine but bow is a hassle so it depends on your background pretty much but I chose to put great bowing technique as a third and last step because I think it's what I've seen the most people struggling with lots of people I've seen just have problems with their bow so much and actually many problems of timing between the left and the right hand of playing fast or getting a good sound a clear sound getting swingy music like something that is swingy that is catchy usually it's problem of bowing technique and I think lots of people get tricked by the generosity of Nico Harpa it's a very generous instrument due to the resonance strings it just gives you a lot of sound. You just need to brush your bow over the strings and it gives you some sound and it's nice and you don't even have to work on the pitch because the keys are there and the pitch is already good. So it's very generous and I think some people just completely don't see that there is a lot of technique that you can gain on your right hand that will make your playing way better. And I think... I think that... Some people might consider it's not really important, bowing technique. And the thing that what they have done or maybe heard for years is how Nicola Harpa is supposed to sound. No, there is so much more. Trust me, when you hear a really good player, especially from Sweden, but not only, uh, playing a really great bowing technique, having great skills there in the hand, then you know what is really great bowing technique. And Basically, my master for that, my teacher, main teacher for that, was Olof Johansson from Vessen, who I got as a teacher in Tupo. And he is teaching a lot about bowing technique. I think more than half of what he teaches is actually about bowing technique. And he has explained that the way of getting the fullest sound out of your instrument is to start the resonance strings and then let them ring, which makes sense. So, you need to go inside your string, you need to grab it. In my head it's like going really inside the string, it's like plowing the ground. You're really grabbing it, it resists a little bit, you're really in, you're really pressing down. And then you release it, so you have this sound. And then you release and you bow kind of lightly. just like stay in the string all the way around because you will have very aggressive sound but it's not to just brush your bow half randomly over the strings it's be precise start every bowing with a kick 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 the ultimate goal is actually to play every bowing with this little tone start tone start as we say in Swedish um, so that's the way. I'm not going to go very much into details about that. Uh, it's complicated, it's a long process to learn and to understand and so on. But basically, you should try to aim for come and release, come and release, ta and release. And it's really something you can practice. And a good way to practice that is to look at yourself from outside. So maybe you have a very good um, imagination and you manage to like detach yourself from your playing but I would say the best way to learn to do that and to see what you are really doing is to videotape yourself just take a camera and make a video of your right hand and check what you are doing as movements you can also use recording but then you will have just the sound but it's also very good to work just with the sound and then the best way to improve what you're doing with your right hand is to look at great masters Look at, I don't know, you love Emilia Amper's sound. Just check how she is bowing. Slow down the videos you find on YouTube or something and check how she is moving and try to reproduce it. Try to match what she is doing. Try to copy it. Imitation is one of the greatest ways of learning. And find the people you like the music of and do like them. So these are the steps I have noticed to usually be a problem, the two last steps being very often a problem for people and people getting stuck and not managing to climb or never understanding what a bow can do, for example. There are probably other steps further, I just haven't met them yet. I hope there are more because I'm very excited about learning. 
and I don't mean that about um, I don't mean that in the way that you should be oh there is so much work to do no I think it's so great that there is a lot to learn you can always improve and I can really tell you when you start getting for example good bowing technique suddenly you compare with how you played just some months ago and you just see such an improvement it's so great I think this joy of music is really what everyone should be able to experience in their path of learning Nikola Harpa. So that's the end of this video. I hope you found good inspiration. If you have any question about what I said, if you want more precisions, if you don't agree with what I say, if you have suggestions or something, don't hesitate to write to me. I really love your learning messages. And also I would like to say a big thank you because People have supported me, supported those videos, have been sending me nerdist comments and questions, and I really love that, and I'm really thankful for that. So thank you very much. And as a last note, I would just like to add, this video was supposed to be a part of a longer video that I just recorded today, and then I was like, no, it's too long, it was half an hour. So I split it into three parts. So there are going to be th at least three videos about Nikola Harpa more specifically. So I hope you will enjoy them. And for people who don't play Nikola Harpa, I hope you will find things that are interesting for you. And I will also make videos about more general stuff about Scandinavian folk music as before. So I hope this was nice and I wish you the best with your Nikola Harpa playing. Bye!